Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on work and energy. The topic of this video is external energy transfers, and we want to know how do you analyze situations in which an external, non-conservative force is doing work upon a system. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the importance of a system and the effect that conservative and non-conservative forces have upon the energy of a system. In the video, I mentioned that a force is a conservative force if the amount of work it does upon an object in moving it between two locations is independent of the path taken by the object between those two locations. The most common conservative forces that we'll discuss are gravity forces and spring forces. The other forces are non-conservative, the amount of work they do depends upon the path. It's always important to identify the system, the object or collection of objects for which you'll be keeping track of its energy, and to define the boundary that separates the system from the surroundings. Once you've identified the system, you can determine if any objects outside the system are applying external, non-conservative forces on the system to do net work. And if they do, the total mechanical energy of the system will be changed. In such cases, there's a transfer of energy across the boundary between system and surroundings. In such cases, the total amount of mechanical energy possessed by the system initially it will, will not be equal to the final amount of mechanical energy. So the big principle we're talking about is that when non-conservative external forces are doing work up on the system, there's a change in total mechanical energy of the system. I'm going to take that concept and write it as an equation, and it looks like this, where W and C is the work done by non-conservative forces, and delta T and E is the change in total mechanical energy. Now in science, whenever we talk about change, what we mean by that is the final amount minus the initial amount. So I'm going to take the top line and rewrite it like this, and I don't really like the minus TMI initial. So I'm going to swing it over to the left side of the equation by adding it to both sides. It cancels from the right, shows up on the left. Now this third line shows TME values on the left and the right. Now what total mechanical energy is, is it's the kinetic plus the potential energy. So I'm going to rewrite this third line like this, where I say the kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial on the left plus the work done by non-conservative forces equal that final amount of kinetic plus potential. Now what I'm going to do is rewrite the equation, but take out the initials, because whenever I write this down, I'll be doing it a lot, it's going to take me a long time to write all those initials and those finals. So I'm going to change the subscript initial to I and the subscript final to F. It's the same equation equation just rewritten a little differently. Now this becomes the big equation that we'll be using in our analysis throughout this video. So that's the key one. I'm going to square it and circle it and star it and remember it because it's going to be used quite frequently. Let's consider the case in which a non-conservative external force is doing positive work upon a system which is initially moving along the ground. Let's represent what happens with what's called an LOL chart. This is a conceptual tool that we use to de demonstrate what form of energy the object or system has and how it changes over time. We'll discuss these in much more detail at a later time, but for now, you might be wondering why they call it an LOL chart. And it's because one day somebody realized that the axes and the system surface spell LOL. Now you know. So this object initially is moving along the ground. It's got no potential energy because it's on the ground and it's moving. It's got kinetic energy. So I'm going to show an arbitrary amount of kinetic energy. I'll just show about one bar of height there. And work is done by a non-conservative force and it's positive work so it gives energy to the system and that's what that arrow represents. Energy going into the system. And on the bar chart I'm going to show a positive bar. I'll make it four, four units high. So initially there's about a unit of kinetic, no potential, and about four units of work being done. That adds up to five. So on the right side of the bar chart, I'm going to have to show five units. I'm going to make an assumption here that the force is horizontal, and horizontal forces don't cause changes in heights. So it will cause a change in speed instead. So I'm going to show five units of kinetic energy on the right side of the bar chart. So what have I, what have I done? Well, I've demonstrated my equation that Ke plus Pe, 1 plus 0, plus work done by non-conservative forces, plus 4, is equal to 5 on the left side, and that's equal to the Pe final plus Ke final, which will be 5 kinetic bars on the right side. 
So now let's consider negative work being done by this non-conservative force upon the system. And we'll say that the system or the object is initially moving through the air. Let's do the LOL chart in energy analysis. Because the object's moving, it initially starts with kinetic energy. And it's in the air, so it has potential energy being above the ground. So I'm going to show that on my bar chart. I'm making arbitrary heights up for these bars. 1 plus 6 is what I have. That totals 7. Then work is done, negative work is done, by a non-conservative conservative force. That removes energy from the system. And on the bar chart, I'm going to show a negative bar. I can go down as far as I want. I'm going to go down negative 5. So on the left side of my work energy bar chart, I have 1 plus 6 minus 5, and that totals to positive 2, which means on the right side, I need two units of bars. Now I'm just going to make the assumption that the object's fallen and there's negative work being done on it. So there's going to be a change in potential energy here since it's falling. And so on the right side, I'll say 1 bar kinetic plus one bar potential. What have I done here? Well, I've shown my equation that the kinetic initial plus the potential initial plus the negative value for work is equal to kinetic final plus the potential final. Now I'm going to use my principle and my equation to do a more numerical example. A barbell has 1,500 joules of PE, and a weightlifter applies a 1,000 newton upward force to displace the barbell upwards a distance of 0.25 meters. And I want to know what is the final potential energy of the barbell. So here I'm going to define the barbell as my system. And work is done by the weightlifter on the system. It's a non-conservative applied force doing positive work. I'm going to write my equation for work and energy relationship. And then I'm going to cancel the KE terms because the barbell starts at rest and finishes at rest. That you know from the context of just weightlifting. Now we can calculate the W and C term in this equation. It's going to be the force of 1,000 newtons times the displacement of 0.25 meters times the cosine of 0 degrees, the angle between the force and the displacement vectors. That comes out to be 250 joules. Now I can take the 250 joules for work and the 1,000 joule, the 1,500 joules for the initial potential and plug it into the work energy equation and it turns out to be this. Now I can solve for the final potential energy. It comes out to be 1750 joules. In my second numerical example, a baseball is approaching home plate with 140 joules of kinetic energy, and a catcher applies a 1500 newton forward force on the ball to bring it to a stop. I want to know the distance over which the mitt retracts backwards while catching that baseball. I'm going to begin by defining the system as the baseball, and it's the catcher's mitt that's doing work up on the ball from outside the system. It's a non-conservative force doing negative work. I'm going to write my work energy equation like this. And on the right side is the kinetic energy final, and I'm going to cancel it because the ball finally is stopped. Now, if you think about the context of catching, the ball doesn't change its height during the catch. It only changes its speed. So I can say that the initial and final potential energy are equal to one another and therefore can be canceled from this equation. Now I know that the initial kinetic energy is 140 joules. I don't know the work done, but I do know the right side of the equation is zero. So that means the work done done by the catcher on the ball must be negative 140 joules. I can now use my work equation in order to solve for the displacement of the ball, which is the distance that the mitt retracts backwards. So I plug in negative 140 joules for the work. I plug in 1,500 newtons for the force. And I plug in 180 degrees for the angle between the force and the displacement vector. I can now solve for d by dividing both sides of this equation by 1,500 newtons. I pull out my calculator. Later, I do my math and D comes out to be 0.09333 forever meters. I can call that also 9.3 centimeters. In my third and final example, a force of 18 newtons is applied parallel to an incline to pull a 2.2 kilogram cart along the incline at a constant speed over a distance of 1.10 meters. I want to calculate two things, the final potential energy of the cart and the final height of the cart. So I'm going to begin by defining the system as the cart, and the student is doing work up on this system. Now I'm going to write my equation for the work and energy, and I'm going to cancel the kinetic energy terms because the 
speed is constant. The KEI on the left is equal to the KEI on the right. So those terms cancel. And I'll notice in the diagram that initially the cart starts on the ground, so its initial potential energy is zero joules. So I have W and C equal PE final. I need to calculate W and C. So I take my equation for work and I substitute in 18 newtons for the force, 1.1 meters for the displacement, and the angle between the force and the displacement is zero degrees since they're directed both parallel to the incline. Now I get 19.8 joules as the work done by this uh, student on the system. And since work is equal to the final potential energy, this is the answer to my first question, PE final equal 19.8 joules. Now the second question is how high does the cart Gets, get pulled. So I'm going to say PE final equal MGH final. I know what the M is, I know what the G is, I know what the PE final is, and I can substitute that all in and solve for HF, and it comes out to be 0 0.92 meters. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources you'll find on our website. I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have two Minds on Physics missions, always excellent practice. The calculator pad section offers problems, answers, and audio guide solutions and there's the tutorial section. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching.